start to think about their goals and all that fun and exciting things. And we, we did one goal, um, I guess it's been like a year now. So we can put that obviously in the show notes uh, or send the links out to people. But are you, uh, are, are you, are you going to do any? I I am. I haven't actually listed any yet or or sat down. I um I'm trying to I'm trying to get out of the kind of mental mindset that I'm setting a new year's resolution uh cuz new year's resolutions tend to be broken. So I'm trying to just set goals regardless of the fact that it's a new year. <laughs> Does that make sense? I'm trying to psych <laughs> myself uh differently. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, to- I totally understand. Um, so, I, uh, I don't know, I, I think you were out of the office. Congratulations on having a, a new- newborn. That's fantastic. Yes, yep, uh, thank you. But uh, I, w- I was actually getting called because I've never done, like, an actual, like, calorie counting cut of any type. But... Uh, I was contemplating. I was contemplating doing it. And the only reason I, I'm thinking about doing it is more because I have never in my entire life restricted calories at all. Is that sad or what? No, actually, that is very... Uh, that's a, actually kind of a, a breath of fresh air, right? Because um, looking at you... Uh, you would, on the outside, purely from appearances perspective, I would have guessed you would have been one who's really watching what you eat, counting all the calories, counting the fat intake, all this stuff, and have really detailed notes on, you know, everything that happens and goes into your mouth. Um, because historically, joining any Weight Watchers or any other program, one of the things they say is, you know, tracking is really the key to, to success. But you are kind of a either an anomaly or <laughs> <laughs> well, what do they say? You 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 just have good genes. So yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> exactly. But but, but uh, really it's not. That's I mean, again, looking at you, it's like it, okay, if you're saying that because I remember even you saying that you don't you've never like really checked your ketone level to see if you were in ketosis and all these different things that I was like I've been trained that you know you gotta you gotta check this you gotta do this you gotta make sure you're within these boundaries of things in order to be successful and you're kind of just throwing all that out the window and saying you know if you just do the right stuff it all will just fall into place without having to do all that stuff well, first off, thank you. That, I'll take that as a huge compliment. But, um, I, you know, like looking at it from a different perspective, there would, there, I would still say there's lots of challenges to the way I went about it, right? So if I started Primal, uh, Primal Blueprint and then slowly got more keto-like, um, that transition allowed me to become fat-adapted and then make that transition easier and once uh, once you've kicked the sugar demon, for lack of a better term, uh, you know you can still eat some, you know, some uh, slower digesting carbs and and not have that sugar addiction. So I, I think it took me a while, but I, I do think that once you've made some of those shifts, and I know you know you I know you've done that before. Um, so I guess maybe my question to you is, what would be something that you're going to change in your situation to to maybe set you up for a little bit more success? Because I do you do you feel like you've fallen off a wagon, or or what would you kind of put yourself in? What situation would you like label yourself as if you had to label it? If I had to label it, I would say yes, I've definitely fallen off the wagon. Uh, and my first my first goal. Uh, that I was going to uh, to do this year was start joining these conversations again to to talk to not only you guys but also hear you know what the audience has to say about different things and different challenges going on and see if I can provide any kind of insight from my perspective. That was like my first goal. Yeah. 
So thinking back about it, um, I guess we, we had mentioned, and I know it's been a while, so I'll just kind of throw it out there again, is the emergency meals, to have that plan for when you don't have a plan. Yep. Uh, so yep. for me, that's the, uh, you know, the frozen chicken, sorry, I said chicken. What I meant to say is salmon. Those frozen salmon patties I get at Costco, they're in the freezer, and whenever there's a huge temptation, I can easily just you know, basically throw that right in the skillet and pan for, pan sear it. And, uh, man, those things are fantastic. Do you have a, do you have a go-to like that on, on your side? I don't at the moment, but that was one of the things that I was going to be uh, listening in on these conversations and coming up with. Uh, so one thing that, so one of my in-laws is also going the keto route, and he's lost a significant amount of weight in the last half of last year. Uh, and awesome. we had a big New Year's party, and the side he brought was a BLT dip that was completely keto, you know, friendly. Uh-huh. And it was awesome. amazing. So I think that what, I was going to prep. What did you, you dip it in? Uh, celery. So, as well, nice. I dipped celery into the dip. Is that what you meant? <laughs> yeah, that's, that is what I meant. I don't know how I asked that. It didn't make any sense. But, yeah, what you said is right. <laughs> okay. So that was going to be what I was going to prep as my go-to quick snack, grab something because I'm hungry and don't really want to think about what I'm eating type of a thing. So that was going to be my first thing that I was going to do for um, starting next week. Well, I've been super happy both. um, I I didn't really go to a New Year's party because I wasn't feeling up to it, but they had actually made a keto dish for me at the New Year's party I was going to, which, yeah. and uh, in Christmas, man, my, my family was so, I w- uh, I w- I'm just going to say low carb just because um, it's not everything was, yeah. was, was super fatty necessarily, but like this, this holiday, like I've never been more impressed with people. I, I think it's, I don't know if it's catching on or what you would call it, but I was definitely much more impressed this year over the holidays. It was way easier to to uh, you know s- you know stick with things and not not yeah. do uh, a, you know a, a super like something like something I regretted. Although I did do a few things I regretted because <laughs> I tried some alcohol that I hadn't drank in a long time and <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> I didn't regret I didn't regret. Uh, doing it necessarily, but I regretted not, I have had, I had three things over the break that I, that I took and we, you know, we started this conversation with the whole, uh, not tracking calories and not tracking macros very close. Yeah. Well, I had, I, uh, swung by Kroger and just picked up, they had those bags of kale chips and I get those all the time and it was just a different brand. They just had a different brand. And I did not look at the packaging. I got home. I ate half of the bag before I realized <laughs> that they were that, that they had sugar in them. They literally put cheese instead of that nutritional yeast. They put they put sugar in their nutritional yeast. I was just like dumbfounded. I couldn't believe it. And then I, I can't remember what alcohol I had, but whatever it was, I looked at I looked up the macros afterwards, and I'm like, oh my goodness, I totally, <laughs> I, totally had, I totally must have had like thirty or forty, yeah, sugar, sugar carbs, and didn't even realize it because it was masked by the the lime juice. Yeah. Any, anyway, enough about my. So see, even when you don't count, you screw up sometimes. <laughs> so don't feel so bad. Uh, the, uh, but the one thing that I do want to I'll, I'll send over to you is uh, I'll, I'll see if I can't find a good copy of it. I modified uh, one of the meals. They had a uh, do you like that tortilla? It's like a I think they call it tortilla soup and it's that kind of Mexican flavor yep. But, yep. but it usually has like tortilla chips that you dump in it. Yep. So I had a I had a, uh, one of the people made a low carb version of that, and I and I made a I made it in my crock pot, not my crock pot, my um, pressure cooker. Yeah. Over over break, and oh man, that was that was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, please do send it over or add it to the keto website. 
or All to right. or have Jolene put it in her Instagram recipes lists. That's right. She does everything. What am I going to do when she's not here? <laughs> <laughs> I can't handle it when she's not around. I have to do my own thinking. <laughs> yes. So so along the line of goals, uh, another and along the line of not wanting to count calories and stuff, and that's my pure laziness. So I don't want to kind of throw off your your agenda or your or what it is that you're trying to accomplish but was to going back to i think it was one of the conversations mid last year around meal preps was getting i'm i cook dinner every day for the most part and i don't have an issue with that what i struggle with is the snacking so what i'm going to quote unquote meal prep are the snack type things where I can just, and kind of like the BLT dip, something I can just grab real quick and just munch on it while I'm cooking dinner or right when I get home so I feel less guilty about it. But along the lines of not counting calories, I know it'll be keto-friendly because that's how I'm building it from the onset. So that was that's one of my goals. <laughs> well, um, I, I do you know, I'm not trying to like call you out on this but do you do you know if it's like uh just like a you just do that out of habit or if you're actually hungry it's a combination of both um so out of habit i know it's definitely out of habit because i know sometimes i'm just not hungry and i'm just wandering around (laughs) so uh but i also found that i don't eat enough at lunchtime here in the office so my second goal is prepping lunches to be su- uh, sufficient enough that it'll satisfy me and actually keep me satisfied throughout the day where I'm not coming home and I'm starving at, you know, 4.30 in the evening and then I got to cook for another hour to get dinner ready uh, and I'm start picking at stuff. So it's, it's packing more in my lunchbox than what I did, what I did last year. That's actually a smart realization. The other thing you can try is, Sometimes you think you're hungry, but you're actually thirsty. Because another thing that we tend to do in the corporate world is go from meeting to meeting to meeting and not necessarily uh, drink a lot. So something to think about, too. Uh, If you're going to grab a snack or you feel like you're hungry, maybe just down a nice eight ounces of water and uh, give yourself a few minutes to, to see if maybe that's what it was. That's a good one. I will try that. I'd never thought of that. It it will help you break it if it's a habit. So like like if you I always come home and I open the refrigerator and take a look in there because I'm thinking about dinner and I'm starting yeah. to prep dinner. Uh, that that could be like the time where you just oh well you know there's X here I'm just going to pop a few in my mouth. Yeah. Or you're starting to you know uh, sometimes that that will just just that making a habit of having water first is enough to reset your thinking. Uh, you know, but just, just something to try. Uh, you never really know. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely smart that you, uh, have thought about that. The, uh, pre meal prep, um, or, or prepping your lunches, just, uh, some thoughts on there to try. Um, it helped me at one point to put a tablespoon or a teaspoon, you know, start with a teaspoon and then go to a tablespoon of MTC oil on top of my lunch. I've got those little mini crock pots. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm, no, I I don't know what that is. Okay. Well, they make crock pot like the brand makes a lunch container. It's like a mini crock pot, and it and uh, I, I I just had pictured you me eating it in front of you at some point in our career, <laughs> careers together, which is why I thought you maybe know what I'm talking about. But basically, um, uh, we can definitely put, put a link in the show notes, but it is just a, a – uh, the, the thing that makes it different is that you all it has is a plug, and you just plug it right in the outlet, and it has containers, and the containers are stainless steel, and they go inside of it. And I bought a case of those inside containers so that when I cook something, instead of putting it in a, like a leftovers container, I put it right in those stainless steel things and stick them in the fridge so that I have them ready for lunch 
uh, at, you know, throughout the week. Does that, that make sense? Not really, but that sounds interesting. So you, you <laughs> so what you're saying is that <laughs> well, no, no, that's why. Let, let me let me let me try to lay it out a little bit better. So, let's say Saturday rolls around and I make the uh, the loaded cauliflower as a side dish. Yeah. And let's say I don't know. It doesn't really matter. But instead of putting the leftovers into like a glass container in the fridge for later, I will take two of these stainless steel bowls that fit in my crock pot. And I'll and I'll put half in one and half in the other, and I stuck them in the refrigerator. Okay. And then su- Sunday rolls around, and let's say, for instance, um, grilling or smoking something, then I will take the shredded meat or an extra patty of whatever it is, and I'll throw it on top of the cauliflower, so okay. that, and that that allows me to have pre-built a couple of lunches that I can use throughout the, throughout the week. Then how do you? And then I put them in my crock pot. I've got a, I've got a crock pot at at at, at my desk. Really? Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. No wonder you weren't understanding yeah, what I was talking about. Yeah, you're you're thinking like, like, okay, great, <laughs> So you take the insert and you just toss it in your crock pot, depending on what it is or how hot you want your food. Yeah. Either, yeah. either an hour or so. And uh, but so yeah, and uh, if you yeah, totally. You've, that, you've got to try it. That is a great idea. Holy cow. Yep. I will I will totally, and I actually have a couple extra of the inserts since you work in my building. Uh, hit me up if you want, so you don't have to pay shipping and handling if you want to order extra for the insides. I will. I'm, I'm Googling it now to see if I can find this thing. Oh, just do personal crockpot, I swear. Or... Yeah, we're we're trying to do too many things all at once. So the reason we went down this, you, you're you're bringing out my my ADHD a little bit here. Uh, <laughs> the reason the, only, the whole reason why we went down this path is because if you're finding you're you're not being satiated, then what I do is I open those lunch containers and I just do a, a spoonful of MTC oil, and that will sometimes give me the caloric boost I need so that I'm not starving when I come home. What is the MTC oil? What is that? Oh, man. Or I guess, what does it do for you or what? I mean, yeah. No, no, that's a fantastic question. So uh, without going into a ton of details on what MTC oil is, it's just basically a fat. Okay. So... As we, if I'm going to stereotype the standard lunch, um, we tend to, at least I tend to, and I'm, I'm guessing that you might fall into the same range, you tend to end up having more protein, and so your ratio is maybe not as, um, I guess, fitting your, your, your needs as much as you thought. So. Because we tend to bring leftovers in a, in a little mini cooler or whatever, because we yeah. work in an office and a desk, we tend to end up with, you know, uh, you know, you know, some of this and some of that. And if you looked at it from an overarching kind of plan, like I said, I don't, I don't really track my macros, but I do kind of listen to my body a little bit, and I find for me, if I'm, if I'm not, if I am hungry too fast. I didn't get enough fat in that meal. So all MTC oil is, is MTC oil is a processed coconut oil, which sometimes it's palm, but anyway, the bottom line is, it, since it's processed, it doesn't really have a strong taste. And uh, I know we a lot of times say that we don't want to concentrate on processed food, but it is one of those um, I guess, kind of exclusions to the rule that um, it, it just allows you to add fat to something without having uh, a big impact on taste. And, um, you know, it just, it's just easy because it's shelf stable. 
And does it have to be refrigerated? So is that like something you keep at your desk and just add a spoonful of sugar to it or not sugar? You know what I mean, though? No, no, I, I do understand. Isn't that funny how that expression is still yeah. still used, even though uh, the it is shelf stable. I do not have it at my desk, but that would make a whole lot of sense. I have it at home above my oven, okay. and okay. I just think about it before when I pull my lunch out and I, I open it up and look at it because sometimes I surprise myself because I don't remember what I put in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and then just based on what it looks like, I just kind of think in my head, um, as the, you know, like I said, I don't really measure anything. So yeah, yeah. I, I just say, I, I think I'm going to throw a spoonful on top and I don't actually even use a spoon anymore. I just open the container and squirt a little in there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, you're really getting behind the curtains here. <laughs> did you find the personal crockpot? Yes, I did. <laughs> found it on Amazon. All right, now does it make more sense? Yes, it does. All right, so there you go. It's twenty ish, twenty twenty two dollars on Amazon right now. Yes, it is. So yeah, I no joke have about four or maybe five of them. Because I've got one at the office, I've got one at home, I've got one um, at my real estate stuff, and then uh, I like don't know the where a- I did the other one. The actual crock pot? Yeah, because I'm, <laughs> I'm too lazy to carry around the little container. <laughs> See, you're just you're uncovering all these things about me. I'm that lazy. That I don't want to put it in the container, but you're but you're you're correct. You could very easily because it seals shut. Yeah, take that whole thing handle and all, and the cord even wraps around and plugs into the bottom yep. so it doesn't fall off, and you can just carry it like a lunch pail. Yeah. Yep, I see that. I'm gonna do it. All right. Well, man, who who knew you'd get this many tips from calling in? <laughs> All right, All right, so, so hit me, I'll let you hit get me back, back on up. track. <laughs> yeah, well, no, no worries, no worries at all. So, hit, hit, but let's let's finish because you said your bigger challenge was sometimes having some default meals. So that'll help you a little bit with lunch because then you can take basically dinner for lunch. Correct. Um, and then remember the other thing that we've talked about before that might help you is the cook a little extra. So, yep. like if you're Doing steak, you can pull uh, pull one steak off a little early because because it, it can be real pink because it's going to cook a little bit more in your little crock pot. Um, and then your emergency meal, if you don't have a lunch, is is just some scrambled eggs and maybe some some sausage links. You yeah, can throw those. You can throw those in the crock pot. Um, I've never done raw eggs in there because it says it says that it will cook them but you have to stir it and stuff it's kind of yeah yeah so basically on sunday when i when i when i'm cooking scrambled eggs uh, if i don't have anything else um i'll throw you know three three scrambled eggs in, in the bottom of one of those and you know that kind of stuff that's another go-to eggs are super easy in frankly sometimes uh a go-to also for me if I don't have something else. Yeah, I do that Cause a lot. Because co- Costco's got those hard-boiled eggs pre-ready to go, just in the container of two. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Have you not? Have you not? Whew, man, you, I, you, I have you, not taken gone. advantage of Costco. Yes. Oh man, I, I'm. I wouldn't take any advice from me because I'm kind of a Costco. <laughs> I don't know. Somebody might think I'm sponsored by Costco. I'm really not, but they, they tend to be pretty keto friendly, and I don't know they 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 sometimes run out of stuff or or rotate things, so that that can be kind of confusing sometimes. But I've got a couple of go tos. I mean, when I hit Costco, man, it's like a circle, right? So I'll hit the meat if I need any meat. And then I, I have a fascination for bell peppers, and so does my son. 
Okay. So I always I always go in there, and then if we're doing any kind of, <clears throat> they've got rice, cauliflower, and stuff, and then I'll hit, I'll hit the uh, the they've got uh, grass fed hamburger patties. Okay. Um, I like those, and then I also get the uh, there's a couple of different things in there, but you know I you know butter and I, I still like bacon on occasion, so yeah. I, I try to to keep stocked up on that. And they've got that partially cooked bacon too, where you can just microwave like five or six slices. Okay. If you've never done that, um, that's that's also. Uh, uh, a convenience thing makes it kind of easy sometimes if uh, you're wanting to, you know, just have a, like a small snack, a, a a sheet. I I can eat a whole sheet of bacon, so you don't want to do that necessarily. But uh, you know, having a couple pieces of bacon that you no can problem. just nuke in the microwave for 30 seconds, man. Sometimes that can just really be, hit the spot. I usually, yeah, bacon's one of my go-tos. Also, I have, I always have two or three packs uh, frozen in the freezer, and I just take them out and throw them in the oven, and they take yeah, about you're, fifteen minutes or so, and they're done. Yeah, yeah. Do you put them on a grate? I put them in a cookie sheet. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I've, I've switched in, in a, uh, yeah, I, I've switched to baking my bacon a lot also because it, it's more it seems like it cooks more evenly it cooks more know. evenly and it makes less of a mess ever since jolene said that in one of the meetings i was like i'm gonna try this and since then that's the way i do it do you do you roll it what do you mean do i roll it well cause that's the other thing she said in that in that uh podcast is that she like twists it so that she can fit more in the sheet I did, I have not. <laughs> that is a good <laughs> idea. No, that, that was, that's her idea. I'm just re, I'm just regurgitating <laughs> it. So if you don't remember that she said that, then no, it's totally my idea. <laughs> but yeah, just give it you know you just you know just give it a little yeah. quick spin. It'll take up about half of the surface area, and when it cooks, it still cooks evenly. There's no yeah. difference. And then it 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 it's a little. It doesn't work as well for sandwiches necessarily, like if you're going to put it on something, like yeah, the, where it yeah. needs to lay flat. So if you're making like a BLT with lettuce, it's it's more like a more like a straw. Yeah. If you if you yeah. do it too tight, so if if you're making some type of mock sandwich, you just you might want to still do it flat. But if if you're just wanting to cook because you have an extra mouth to feed, maybe. Yeah. I'm sure they don't do bacon yet, but. Uh, you know, you, you can get more on the on the sheet that way. Yeah, that's a great idea. All right, well, this turned out to be all about you. So why don't you why don't you hit me up? What's your what's your next thing I, I can maybe throw you an idea on? Well, that that was the the lunch one is going to be a phenomenal one. That is going to I think that one's going to help a tremendous amount because one of the things I struggle with is a lot of the foods I bring are cold and then I have to heat them up in the microwave. So I get lazy and don't want to do that. So I just eat them cold. And again, that's less appetizing. But if I have this little personal crock pot and it's just cooking with me right here, that's going to be so much better. And that again, it'll, it'll definitely motivate me to eat the food that I bring. Cause it's going to be nice and warm straight out of the crock pot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you like that. Um, th- so I'll throw you one more tip on that then. Um, I hooked mine to my light at my desk because <laughs> I I sometimes forget that I it's lunchtime and uh, you, yeah it, it it gets hot if you if you turn you know if you if you forget to eat lunch and you just keep that thing on I mean that thing is hot okay hot so just maybe maybe call that a warning so Connected if you got your something light. well yeah like my you know my uh, the light on your <laughs> a, my, what's the thing called a vestibule a ve- yeah a vesta, whatever whatever that thing called you know since we work in the in the cube world yeah you know, i took my my light and i turned the switch so it's always on and instead of plugging it into the outlet i plug it into my power strip that's in my vestibule is it called a vestibule is that what I you call it i think so i think so i, I know what you're talking about well, whatever 
Okay, whatever it is, the big square over my desk. Yeah. Uh, and, and and then uh, so that when it's my crock pot's on, my lights on, so it reminds me to not forget about my crock pot. Nice. That's a good idea. <clears throat> well, that's. I'm telling you, I should do an ADHD show because <laughs> the, the, the stupid little teeny processes I put in my life so that I don't screw up myself <laughs> are kind of crazy. But that's that's how you do it, man. That is, those are all the things that people that people those are all the hurdles that people get hit by when they say, "Oh, I can't do that anymore because of this or whatever." These tips and tricks are the things that can make the difference, right? Yeah, yeah. You never know where you're going to find one either, right? <laughs> yeah. And then you never know where you're going to actually do it, right? Because the whole making your mayonnaise, it's been a complete year, and I still have yet to do that. <laughs> yeah, I haven't done it either. I was, I'm still telling myself I'm going to try that one. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both, man. And then you know what? The first time we do it, we'll probably be like, I don't know why we, why we didn't do that sooner. <laughs> yep. Right? Because I keep thinking in my head, I want to do the little mayo, and then I want to take some out, and then I want to put the rest of the ingredients in for my Caesar salad dressing, yep. and then just hit it, hit it at the same time. Because I love, I love me a Caesar salad. <laughs> I don't think I've gotten that far where I love salads, but <laughs> that may come. Oh. I guess. <laughs> well. <clears throat> You have to remember, like, my salads are probably don't, they may not qualify for salads because <laughs> salad people think that salads are healthy. And I don't think mine are necessarily healthy because I do the mixed greens. Yeah. And then I do, like, usually I do two hard boiled eggs and two hard boiled egg yolks. Okay. Um, because my kids like, my, I've, I've got one. One of one kid that hates the yolks, so yeah. I have no problem taking theirs. Yeah, and then um, and then I do salmon, and then I just in that hard, uh, the old hard cheese. Um, par- what's, what's that called? I think there's a name for it, but anyway, it's like the shaved Parmesan cheese. Okay, you can get the the brick of hard Parmesan that's been aged, and then you just either scrape it off or I'm lazy, so I've got one of those where you this not not a salad shooter, but where you just crank the handle and it runs the grate over, so the grated <laughs> cheese just falls on my plate. Is that like Olive Garden where they kind of oh, turn it over you your know plate? What? It is exactly like Olive Garden. <laughs> I didn't. I you know what? Until you said that, I bet you I have the exact same apparatus. <laughs> yeah. Who knew that? There oh, you, you want to know what else I do with that? Because I'm lazy. You, you, you've got it. You've got to use it within the week. Like you can't like let it sit for a long time. But you just take the whole contraption and you just put it in a uh, quart Ziploc bag and zip it shut, <laughs> and then you can use it again the next day <laughs> without having to clean it or <laughs> or reload it just, or reload it. Yeah, you just cut a bigger block in the beginning. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, man, I'm really uh, painting myself in a pretty poor picture in here, aren't I? But these how, are the things I'm telling you. These are the things that that make success. And all of, and you said that the unhealthy salad. I don't understand what's unhealthy about it, or why well, why you would say considered unhealthy. Well, uh, uh, well, yeah, good, 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 good call, good call on uh, challenging me on that. I, I think I guess what I was saying is by the time I put my dressing and everything on there, it's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of a thousand calories for a salad. And I guess the reason why I said it wouldn't be healthy is because in the standard American kind of thought process where you get your dressing on the side and you yeah, yeah. are eating a salad because you're trying to be calorie restrictive, I, I, guess I, sh- I guess I should have said it's definitely not a calorie restriction salad. Yeah. yeah. That'd probably be a better way. So I'm glad you challenged me on that because that, that's a – Sometimes we get ourselves into the mindset where we we still follow the same dogma, <laughs> even though you know we think differently. We still say some of the old old terms or old yeah. thought process. And, and that so, I guess that goes back to what I what I was kind of saying earlier about the whole calorie counting thing is that if <laughs> 
if that's considered unhealthy, then I'm unhealthy. And if I can look at <laughs> the end of the day being unhealthy, even better, right? <laughs> even more so. So Yeah. Well, I think it comes down to, and the reason why I was going to do it is because I've never done it before. And sometimes yeah. I feel like when we're in this role where we are putting our life out on shout and yeah. trying to learn from other people, I have gotten pushback, and, and um, I've mentioned it before. I, I work at Gold, yeah, and I get and I get I get people that say, "Well, you've never had to, you know, you've never had to worry about eating ever." And I'm, I'm and I kind of want to say, you know, in high school I had a bigger waist than I have now. You know, what I mean, like I, yeah, it, yeah, it, it was a process. It wasn't like I can just eat whatever I want. I choose what I eat, and I found a mix that works for me to where I don't have to pay attention. Yeah, but but because I've never actually done some of that stuff, sometimes I have struggle with relating. Yeah. Yep. And uh, and I don't know. I mean, it's like a month ago when we tried the carnivore diet. I I just you know I kind of wanted to know what it was like. It didn't. Yeah. Really, yeah. But I I gave up on it before I probably <laughs> gave it a fair share because I just couldn't handle it mentally, maybe. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, I mean, I just like to think about how I'm going to challenge myself next. Did, did I tell you what I'm trying to do right now? No. Other than the calorie counting, but no. No, 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 no. Like, uh, fitness, what, fitness-wise, I'm trying no. to do a backflip. Oh, really? Like a no-hand yeah. backflip or a hand backflip? Well, I appreciate that you asked me that question because I have worked myself up over over Christmas break to where I can do a a with hands. Yeah. But uh, but uh, that elevate trampoline park here in town. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I I've gone to it a couple times, once without children, <laughs> and uh, once with my wife so yeah. she could watch our children. Why I tried it, and I'm close. I am close. To on a trampoline and be able to do it with no hands. Nice. Very it cool. is a mental, mental challenge. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. Very cool. Very cool. I don't know. Not too many people are in their 40s say, you know what? I'd really like to learn how to backflip. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, so you, I, you're right, but I bet you a lot of them would like to be in the shape that they could be in to be able to do it. And that's that's what the that's what the the thing is. Well, I I like that you kind of thought about that because I there's no way I would have done I could have done it the first day, right? Yeah. So even though I'm in shape, it uses muscles and just the going behind, you know, like yeah, going, going backwards. backwards. Yeah. Is, it's it's like your equilibrium is not used to it. Yep. So I had to train. Like the first few times I went, I had to actually train going backwards. So like I was doing these little mini drops to my back and then yeah. letting my rotation go over just so I could get comfortable. So it's very similar to like what you said about working up to it. Yeah. You just got to find those small steps to take it to the next level. Right. And, uh, you know, it's like, I hope it's not like the muscle up though. I did one really ugly muscle up and then I kind of quit trying to do it because gotcha. it's winter. So now when summer comes around, I'm like totally going to have to relearn how to do it because, <laughs> because I don't think I could even do it right now. And the first one was so ugly, um, you know, from me, like keeping my body level that, What's uh, up? muscle up. What's that? You don't. Oh yeah, man. I'm. I'm. This. This is turning to be all about me now. For the second <laughs> half. Uh, the muscle up is a. <clears throat> I don't know. Some people call it park park core, but basically there's a body weight calisthenics. Um, is 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 uh, kind of popular. Not so much around here in central Illinois, but on the coasts where it's more, uh, you know, California and whatnot. But uh, a muscle-up is where you do a pull-up, but at the top of the pull-up, you keep your momentum going, 
and you take your body all the way over. So if you think a uh, American Ninja Warrior, yep. and they go up the salmon ladder, yep. it's a version of that, um, and uh, where you pull your body weight so far over, and in a muscle up, you just go all the way over the bar to where the bar comes to your waist. And then in a, in a salmon ladder, you take the momentum. It's the same, technically, it's the same type of move. Yeah. But instead of going with the bar all the way up to your waist, you move the bar up to where it, your waist, you know, you, you basically t- take it up. So the bar yeah. goes up so it's not at your waist. It's at, it's at the next level for you to yep. do the next uh, version. I mean, the next, sorry, ladder step. So a muscle up is you can do on just a regular bar at the park, and yep. you would you would just do, do a a pull up, and you would have so much momentum that you would carry your body up and over to where your entire top half of your body was above the bar. And you you got you did it. You were able to do I did it. One. I did one. <laughs> yes. As a matter of fact, okay. Picture this. <laughs> This is this is this is probably more information you want to know, but this also gets you a glimpse into mine. So I'm at Gold's Gym. I'm on the floor, and everyone's just doing their normal, you know, lifting, blah blah blah. Yeah. Got their headphones yeah. on, doing their normal thing. And I go up to I go up to the we, we basically have a pull up bar that's attached to uh, a squat rack. Yeah, and yeah. I. Yeah. And I and I do one and it's and I don't and I don't land it and I give myself a little time and I did the one and basically I I was too high on my right and then I got it up enough that I was able to 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 strong arm myself to get all the way up. Yeah. So I had to yeah. I had to look like somebody who was convulsing um, <laughs> to get up to get to the top. And then when I got down, I was the most excited ever. So I had I did this little like. You know, and yeah, I, yeah. And I, and I kind of run around, and I thought, if anybody saw that, they would think that I was <laughs> celebrating the ugliest thing ever. Uh, but yeah, that's exactly uh, how it happens. And um, I've done a few that were just as ugly, and I've tried to tone down my celebration. Yeah, uh, because you know I, I get some strange looks. But yeah, that's uh, how it goes. And now I've got a pull-up bar at my at my house. So yeah. I can do it. So you right can do now. it in With privacy or your own home. <laughs> yeah. I've done some pretty stupid stuff, though. I, I kicked really hard forward, and it's really close to the – I have it about two or three feet away from a uh, chain link fence. <laughs> and I caught the chain <laughs> And I almost completely fell on my back. Oh, so, you know, I, 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 do, I do some pretty ugly stuff at home also. So. <laughs> uh. All right. Well, uh, we are. I, I don't think we've ever done one of these where we haven't ran over on time. <laughs> well, so. b- b- before you before you wrap up, what, what were your plans on the calorie counting? Just so. Oh, so I, so um, so what I did was I. <laughs> oh golly, it's gonna sound like I, I, I'm um, I'm talking up Costco again. So basically, <laughs> I, I I went online. And we've talked about uh, Keto Savage before. He's a, he is a bodybuilder who uses keto as a safe way to do um, bodybuilding prep. So a lot of people diet down and do some really major calorie restriction. Well, he's kind of the opposite. He kind of uh, does – he tapers down the calories at one point, but he, he does this me- metabolism – where he kind of ups your calories in the beginning a little bit to build like a, a, a more stable platform. So anyway, he's got this cut, for lack of a better term. And uh, we've talked about it before on the show, and, I, and I've always said if I was ever going to do something, I would do that. Well, there's also a challenge at our gym uh, where they're going to do like a challenge, and I'm contemplating trying to do this cut. And the reason why I would do calorie counting is because I actually have to up my calories a little bit to 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 uh, you know track that. So the way I would do it is I went around with my fitness pal when I was at Costco last time, <laughs> and I have one day loaded with a whole bunch of stuff that that 
I have on a regular occasion. So it wouldn't be calorie counting as much as pro or pro planning to say, okay, well, I'm going to, you know, have two servings of this and three servings of that and trying to get it to kind of fall into that range I'm supposed to have for his program. So it would be the first so many days I'd probably go up on calories and then I would taper down. And it's just, it would take some planning on my part that I don't normally do today. So a Sunday prep would be somewhat mathematical because I would actually look at my macronutrient breakdown and to make sure to make sure I either had enough of everything and where I fell. So that's the plan. I don't so know do if you, I will. So do you have an idea of how many calories you eat on a daily basis right now based no. on the food that you do eat? No, oh. and I don't count. Oh, wow. Okay. Isn't that weird? Yeah, that's that that extremely weird. weird. Yeah, it's very. Yep. But so I, I just, I don't want to do it just unless I'm going to learn something. But yeah. I, I do think like what you just said is like how many calories on average do you even eat? And I honestly, I, I don't really know. Um, and, you know, if I ate more, would I gain more muscle? Yeah. Uh, and so I, I will, I still have some days left, but I would literally go um, do one of those. Not